back down to like the single single digits. So and okay. so recording. Okay. 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 I'm going mute but now. Okay. But it's still not live. I will go live right now. Okay. 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 Great. <laughs> the joy of technology here. That's right. That's right. Okay, we got it. We're ready to go here. All is okay. Great. Okay, we're ready, I think. Okay. <laughs> Hi, welcome everyone to our session today about graduate studies in the field of journalism and communication. We're very excited to have our partner here at the University of Missouri, um, Jillian Collins. She's the director of um, sponsored student programs. And she'll be speaking to us about the graduate school application process, um, about, of course, sponsored student programs, and also um, specifically a little information about applying to the School of Journalism and the requirements around that. And my name is Paula Massad, and I'm one of the Education USA advisors based at the US Embassy in Doha. And today I have with me my colleagues, Asil and Hanadi. Hanadi, do you want to give a quick hello? Oh, I'll turn it over to Asil. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there she Okay. Go ahead, so, Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Paula, for the introduction. I'm Hanadi Dombra. I'm the English Language and Education Outreach Coordinator at the, embassy, at the US Embassy in Doha, and we are part of the uh, Education USA uh, in, uh, in, yeah. in Doha, in Qatar. And we welcome you, Jillian, in our uh, presentation today. And I hope all uh, people who will join us will uh, enjoy your presentation. Over to you, Asil. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm Asil Ogeli. I'm a member of the Education USA Qatar. Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us today. And uh, thank you, uh, Julian for joining us as well and I see David as well so thank you so much for joining us and we hope that the participants will benefit from the session and please mm -hmm. uh, feel free to share your questions in the chat box whenever you need but there will be a dedicated time for Q&A and you can do it in English and Arabic we can translate the, the questions and uh, the answers so yeah over to you thank you over to you Julian or Paula Thank you, Asil, and thank you, um, Hanadi. Just a quick overview. So, who we are? What is Education USA? Education USA is a Department of State, U.S. Department of State network of advising centers around around the world. And in Doha, we are based at the U.S. Embassy. And um, what we do is we offer free and unbiased guidance or advising for international students who are interested in studying in the United States. And so we encourage you to make an advise uh, to schedule an advising appointment with us if you have any questions about US higher education and we'll be sharing our contact information with you at the end of the session. But at this time I would like to turn it over to Jillian. Um, Jillian, welcome and welcome to everyone that's joined us on the Zoom platform and anybody that's watching us on our Facebook live stream. Jillian, go ahead. Thank you, Paula, Hanadi and Azil. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you again for joining me for the session on graduate education in the United States. Um, I again would like to give a special thanks to Education USA Qatar for hosting me for this session. Um, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to connect with you today. Um, so my name is Jillian Collins, and I serve as the Director of Sponsored Student Programs with MU's International Center. I've worked with sponsored students for close to eight years now um, and also received my bachelor's and master's degree um, in educational leadership from Mizzou and I'm currently a PhD student. So I'm familiar with the realm of education and um, the situation that you're in now looking for institutions uh, to pursue graduate education. Um, our unit um, serves all international students who are sponsored um, with external funding for their academic program. So we assist sponsored students from the point of inquiry to the point of program completion. And we work with over 30 different sponsoring agencies and serve close to 200 students. Um, sponsored students on our campus are a unique, unique subgroup of international students and are typically very high achieving um, international students. Uh, we have partners that include foreign government educational ministries, 
US government scholarship programs, foreign universities, NGOs, and private companies. Um, MU-sponsored student population makes up about 17% of our total international student population, and they represent more than 50 countries. If you'd like to learn more about the sponsored student program, you can scan the QR code on the screen. Um, but before I jump into today's um, session, I'd like to give a brief overview of our institution. Um, so we are um, located in the state of Missouri in the city of Columbia. So we're smack dab in the center of the United States um, in what's considered the Midwestern region of the US. Um, I have a couple of advantages um, that I like to share with students about the Midwest. Um, number one, the cost of living tends to be cheaper in the Midwest region and the Midwest tends to be safer than other parts of the United States. Columbia itself is ranked number six among um, US colleges and universities for the best safety resources ac according to college stats. Um, and then third, because I, I know our international students like to travel a lot during the breaks, it's really easy to travel from the center of the country to either coast or south or north um, from the Midwest. Um, Missouri has all four seasons. So we have spring, summer, winter, and fall. Um, in the summer, we can get as high as uh, 31 degrees Celsius, and in the winter, we can get as low as uh, zero to three degrees Celsius. So you kind of, uh, we run the whole gamut um, as far as climate goes. So um, MU serves as the flagship institution for the state of Missouri and is home to 30,000 tigers who hail from all 50 states and more than 100 countries. Um, Mizzou is a Carnegie Classified Research One institution for high research productivity and is one of 34 public institutions who are members of the Association of American Universities. The American, um, the, the Association of American Universities or known, also known as the AAU was founded in 1900 and includes 65 leading research institutions. Um, and just a few uh, quick stats for you, AAU member schools account for 60% of federal research dollars awarded to U.S. universities, and 36% of all international students in the United States choose to study at AAU schools. Um, the University of Missouri um, is among uh, one of those top institutions, and we spend over $200 million annually on research and account for 70% of the research dollars flowing through public Missouri public universities. So without further ado, um, our session agenda today, um, I'll provide a brief overview of graduate education in the United States. I will review application requirements and timelines. I'll give a brief overview of journalism and communication, and then we will review some application tips. So graduate education versus undergraduate education. Um, graduate school tends to be specialized. It's focused on a specific discipline and there are fewer electives. Um, so you're more focused on your specific emphasis area. It's a rigorous evaluation of your work, um, both by your professors and by your peers. And the class sizes tend to be smaller um, and with the hopes of having um, more interaction with your peers and your faculty. There are opportunities for work experience through internships, teaching, or research. And the goal is to eventually produce um, original research of your own, depending on what your research topics are. There are higher expectations regarding the quality and the quantity of your academic work at the graduate level. And then all graduate programs, master's and PhD, will require um, coursework and written work, um, typically in the form of a capstone um, report, thesis, or dissertation. Um, so whereas, there, whereas for your bachelor's degree, you're taking about 120 hours, for a master's degree, you're taking between 30 and 35 hours. Um, and again, the, there's an increased interaction with faculty and classmates. So graduate school in the United States, master's degrees are typically between two to three years. Um, specialist degrees- Jillian, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think your slides aren't moving, I think. Oh. I mean, there I'm you go. Sorry. Okay, no, there you go. Okay, sorry for interrupting. Oh no, thank you for interrupting. I apologize. Um, so specialist degrees in education typically um, they also require masters and they're two to three years typically. And then doctorates are five to seven years. 
So where do you begin when you're looking at graduate education in the United States? Um, number one, you want to prepare and research. So this information gathering stage is really important and should typically take place between 12 and 14 months before you're wanting to start applying for degree programs. It's important to know what field of study you would like to pursue and the emphasis area you would like to focus on. Um, I know that many of you are interested in graduate study for journalism and communication, but it's, in, it's important to know what emphasis areas you intend to pursue. For journalism, this could be documentary, data journalism, or strategic communication, and or for communication, this could be political communications, mass media, identity and diversity communication, or health and crisis communication. It's also really important to know what your career goals are. In fact, this will be a large part of your application for graduate school, particularly in your statement of purpose. Your academic um, division will want to know what your career goals are and what you wanna do after graduation. Um, for this, it's important to use your networks. Talk to people who have studied in the United States, university alumni, or even ask the department directly if they have student ambassadors that they could connect you with. Another great resource um, is of course, Education USA. Um, they are often connected with students before they leave for the United States and are working with them as they're looking for institutions abroad um, and could perhaps connect you with other students. In addition, it's important to know what your priorities are when you're looking for an institution. Um, though many, many times a lot of guidance is um, that you do not uh, rely on rankings alone, but that you look at specific academic programs and determine if the curriculum at that particular institution is fitting what your research interests are. Um, it's important to understand that there can be some um, limitations in the global rankings in that you should look at the research of the faculty, um, the specific emphasis programs offered, um, and the curriculum that is being offered as well and make sure they align with your, your needs. And then finally, narrowing your university choices and preparing for your applications. Um, applications can take quite a while to put together and submit. And so it's really important to prepare in advance, especially when standardized tests and written materials are, are a required component of that application. Um, a, a couple of questions you might ask yourself is when you're selecting a program is does the faculty in your program of interest conduct research that aligns with your goals and does the university environment and program of interest meet your priorities will it be a good fit for me. The standard application materials for graduate um, applications include an online application. Most, of pro most programs in the United States will have an online application through the graduate school um, and departmental forms will be embedded through that online portal. Um, most applications will require a statement of purpose and this is a really important component of the application. In this um, particular piece, you will be conveying your career goals and why you think that particular degree program will help you meet those goals. Um, letters of recommendation are another really important component of the application. Um, programs will likely specify the preferred sources for the recommendations. For example, they may say we want two recommendations from faculty and one from an employer, for example. It's really important to pay attention to those details and be sure that you're requesting recommendations from those particular individuals. Um, and then, of course, writing samples um, are typically required for journalism and communication programs. Be sure that you're looking at the prompt if the department provides one and that you're answering those questions thoroughly. I'm sure you hear this a lot, but when it comes to writing samples and written materials, it's important to um, draft and redraft, have people review them, um, and make sure that you're submitting your best work. And last, um, it's important to be sure that the, the standardized test scores are meeting the specified requirements of both the graduate school and the academic department. As um, some of you may know, the graduate school admission requirements can be different from individual academic departments. 
And so it will be important that you look at both of those requirements and are meeting um, those scores. So the graduate application process in the United States is typically, um, it typically happens in two segments. You are essentially submitting one application um, to the academic program and then the second to the graduate school. So it will go through a two um, point review process. Um, first, the academic program will receive your application and review with the admissions committee and make a decision. And then second, if you're admitted by the academic department, the decision will be shared with the graduate school who will conduct a final review of admissibility and grant the final admission decision. So you should receive two, two admission updates when you're applying for graduate programs. So the School of Journalism um, at the University of Missouri is known as one of the oldest in the country. It was founded in 1908. Um, and is also known for a specific type of te teaching pedagogy that is known as the Missouri Method. Um, the Missouri Method brings hands-on philosophy um, of learning by doing, and this method has been incorporated into all degree programs at Mizzou and focuses on applying classroom work outside the classroom. Um, but it also prioritizes um, interdisciplinary collaboration in situations where journalism students are working with engineers and education students are working with public health. Um, the goal is to have this cross collaboration between fields of study. So the School of Journalism curriculum um, really reflects that Missouri method. Um, you dive into your careers early um, by working in six different professional newsrooms um, or two different advertising agencies while you're still in school. Um, for example, KBIA is Mid-Missouri's NPR member station where students can use audio, photo, video, and text to produce newscasts, talk shows, or podcasts. Another example is KOMU um, TV, and this is um, serves as the only university owned commercial television station and it's an NBC affiliate where students can cover major news um, that's happening in the community, both in sports and entertainment as reporters and producers and anchors for on air, online or social media platforms. And again, these are just two examples of how the Missouri method is embedded into the curriculum. Um, again, another portion of that hands-on learning emphasis is shown through the number of study abroad and internship experiences that are part of the, the department. Um, at Mizzou, nearly half of all journalism students study abroad and gain credit and work experience outside the United States. Our J School has offices in Barcelona, Brussels, New York, and Washington, D.C., and many of our strategic communication programs choose to gain experience in Hong Kong, Prague, or Tokyo, taking what they've learned inside the classroom and putting it to work in a whole new environment. Um, another interesting fact is that 97% of Missouri journalism alumni find employment or, or continued studies within one year of graduation. Um, and again, much of this is due to the fact that J school students begin working in professional newsrooms and strategic communication agencies during their academic program. Um, again, building that hands on experience that leads to better internships and career building opportunities. As you can see here on this slide, um, these are examples of Missouri J school students. Um, and they're getting internships at some of the top companies like NBC News in Washington, DC. 60 Minutes in New York and the World Group in Hong Kong, for example. The goal is that you graduate with an equivalent of a year's professional experience or more on your resume by the time you complete your program. So jumping into the career fields or the application season um, with some really great relevant work experience under your belt. So in a recent survey um, done with journalism graduates, um, they found that 18% uh, worked in online and social media fields, 
22% in news and magazines, 9% in TV and radio, and 4% in photo and news design, 47% in advertising, marketing, and PR. So you can see that the types of fields that the students are entering after they graduate is pretty wide. And a lot of that has to do with the area of emphasis they choose to focus on when they are admitted to Mizzou's journalism program. So our communication program um, is also a really popular this. And I'd like to start by sharing a few program highlights. Um, Mizzou's communication program is ranked top five, um, offering doctoral degrees in communication according to academic analytics. It features six different emphasis areas and is nationally known um, for the faculty who have worked and published in top journals, including the Journal of Communication, Communication Research, and Communication, communication Monographs. Um, and again, that hands-on Missouri method framework is embedded um, in this degree program as well, where faculty and graduate students are responsible for teaching students um, in one of the fastest uh, majors that is growing on our campus. Um, the goal of the communication department is to create an environment where students acquire and hone the skills to become top researchers and, scholar and scho scholars in their communication discipline. So as I mentioned prior, uh, the communication program has six focus areas and I'll talk about um, just a few of them. But if you'd like to find more information about some of the other ones that I don't um, review here, there's a link at the bottom of the screen and you can go there to get some more information. Um, so for example, health and crisis communication is one of the six focus areas. And this area examines interpersonal communication um, organizational communication and public communication related to health and crisis contexts. Um, mediated communication focuses on theory and research related to media content and use, media effects and audience reception. So scholars in this area study the psychological process of media and use effects, media representation of cultural groups and immersive media. Um, to understand um, the reception of popular culture and fan studies. Political communication is another popular focus area amongst um, international students. And this area is features nationally and internationally known faculty whose study of politics and communication encompasses the communicative activity of citizens um, and individual political figures. Um, so in this uh, particular focus area, you are working with advocacy groups and social media or social movements. Um, and it's also featured um, with the Political Communication Institute, which is part of Mizzou's communication department. So Mizzou's communication program also has several research centers that again, are embedded into the graduate program curriculum um, where students are expected to gain hands-on experience. For example, the MEU Disaster and Community Crisis Center focuses on enhancing preparedness in communities affected by disaster and community crisis. The Political Communication Institute is also housed within the department and seeks to develop knowledge and promote greater understanding of how communication functions in the practice of politics and achievement of democracy. The Media and Diversity Center examines media and diversity with regard to the complexity of social group identities and experiences. And all of these research centers have the goal of ensuring that graduates, again, obtain work experience before graduation, enhancing their job placement after graduation. In fact, the communications department has a 95% completion rate of PhD students enrolled in the program and a 100% job placement rate at both research and teaching fo focused institutions, as well as in government and private sector positions. So I reached out to our communications faculty and our journalism faculty for some tips that they would provide to international applicants um, that are interested in, in applying to communication or journalism programs. Um, and so I'd like to share those with you next. 
Uh, so a couple of things. Number one, be sure that you're submitting your application um, at least seven days before the deadline. Make sure that you have checked the language requirements, that you check the need for standardized tests, um, the GRE, GMAT, TOEFL, or other standardized tests. Um, you always want to be sure to contact the academic department for any questions that you have, but also avoid asking faculty questions that you can easily find the answer to online. Um, if you're not reviewing the information that's out there, um, it kind of, it shows that you're not doing your due diligence before you're applying. A lot of the, of great information about the application procedures or degree requirements are on departmental websites. So I would always encourage you to review that information first before reaching out to faculty for those types of questions. That said, when it comes to um, research priorities or faculty and business areas, when it comes to the types of research they're doing, those types of questions are encouraged and you should reach out to faculty when you when those types of questions come up. So some specific tips for international applicants interested in communication. Um, again, it is a PhD program with six emphasis areas. It will be important that you decide and are able to articulate what emphasis area you would like to pursue um, and that you're able to outline that as part of your application materials. It's also important to know that the communication program at Mizzou is a highly competitive program. Um, they accept six to eight students um, and they receive about 100 applicants each season. It's also important that you identify faculty advisors and research connections in advance. Um, because especially at the master's and PhD level, um, you will need to have a strong advisor that can help you throughout your research process. You'll want to be sure that your interests and your advisor's research background do um, work together. And then with the admissions committee, they have a high emphasis on university faculty and research fit. They want to know that your emphasis area aligns with the focus areas the program provides. They want to know that the faculty um, that you're choosing as your advisor and your research interests align, um, and that you'll be a good fit for the institution overall. So those are some of the tips from the communication department for international applicants. And for the journalism program, um, one of the, the biggest things that they um, want students to look for is that 100 on the TOEFL or seven on the IELTS. Um, that is a higher um, language score for many programs, but it is really important because communication and written skills are a large part of the, the program curriculum. Um, in addition, it is a really intensive program and curriculum, so you need to have excellent writing and communication skills. The next thing they look at are grades so your GPA um, and your essays. Um, when the admission committee is looking at this and they're trying to decide between one applicant or the other, those that's the next tier of um, items that they're gonna be looking at and weighing heavily. Um, in your letters, your essays, you need to be able to convey why you want a journalism de degree and what your career goals are. And then last, um, they do specify the reference letters and where they would like them to come from. These are a key component for the admissions committee when they're reviewing applicants. So be sure that you are getting um, them from a direct supervisor or from university faculty. Um, and again, for more information about the master's program in journalism, that link there will take you to additional details. And with that, um, I will open it up for questions. Thank you, Jillian, for providing this wonderful information, the overview to the graduate school application process, and then more information about the journalism um, master's degree or doctoral degree. Um, we have participants here in the Zoom um, and our Zoom platform. If any of you have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box, or you're welcome to unmute your mic and just ask the question directly. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. 
Paula, while they're um, thinking of questions, I'm sorry I was a little late. I just wanted to say assalam alaikum to everyone and greetings from Missouri. And uh, I, my name is David Curry. I'm the director of International Student Scholar Services. And and I, I want to reassure you, if you look behind me here, well, which way is it? This way. <laughs> That's in reverse. Mizzou is our nickname, M-I-Z-Z-O-U. You would hear that a lot here on campus, especially at a, at a basketball game or football game or soccer. Uh, you'll notice there's a, an emblem on the flag. It's a, it's a tiger. And I just want to reassure you, there are no tigers here in uh, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, it's the Bengal tiger. Uh, we borrowed that from our friends in in India, I guess, I, but there's a, there's this little historic story about the tiger. Apparently, in the American Civil War, about the time uh, the school was created in 1839, a group of students formed a, a protective guardian group to protect the campus from vigilantes and and rebels. And so the tiger was their emblem of bravery and courage. And so that, that emblem has stuck with us. And so marhaba to all of you, to, uh, to our colleagues at Education USA, to Paula and Asil and Hanadi, and also to uh, all of you that are participating today. Thank you for giving us the honor and the privilege of sharing a little bit about our school with you. So I hope you'll ask us some questions and you're in good hands with Jillian and, and Paula and the USA team, the Education USA team. Uh, we're so delighted to have you uh, learn about American education, higher education, and also about the University of Missouri. So thank you and have a great day. It's, it's great to be with you today. Thank you, David, um, for introducing yourself and providing that little fun historical uh, background about the tiger. Um, but I, if, if we often get the question um, asked about uh, scholarship opportunities for international students. So maybe you could speak a little bit about um, if there are scholarship opportunities for international school, school students and what the application process is. So, yeah, so Jillian, you got No, well, I'll start and you probably need to fill in the gaps. So one of the key ways, especially at graduate education, and I myself, and I think Jillian experienced this, in our um, master's degree programs is that you can fund your master's program if you, know, if you need additional funding beyond your government sponsorship. Uh, there are graduate assistantship opportunities. And I think Jillian had mentioned that earlier. And there are also fellowship opportunities. So a little bit of difference there. There's teaching assistantships and research assistantships. And the department in the journalism school that wants your talent will offer you a position and you will work 20 hours a week or maybe 10 hours a week for the department. And typically it's gonna be research or helping grade papers or some type of capacity. It could be administrative support and programming. And with that uh, type of fellowship and assistantship, you receive a tuition waiver and a monthly stipend. It's not a lot of money. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of minimal wages, you might say, to help sustain you during the graduate program, but it can actually fund the majority of your graduate uh, uh, experience here. Uh, so that's one way. And, and then there are scholarships and special, uh, uh, you might say fellowship uh, programs within each of the colleges and schools, particularly in journalism, that are funded by endowments and uh, alumni and uh, uh, supporters of the university that want to help uh, international education and help international students succeed. And those are usually named after someone. Uh, there's a variety of those types of scholarships. And again, those amounts could vary anywhere from $500 a semester to $2,500 a semester. And, you know, it just depends on the, the emphasis of the gift and the scholarship. So I'll, I'll stop there. Jillian may want to fill in some gaps there and, and has a different additional information to share. Yeah, so as far as applying for those positions, it is a part of the online graduate application process. So um, on the online application, you will see a question that says, are you interested in being considered for assistantship or fellowship positions? If you are interested, you would want to be sure to check that box so that if you are admitted um, to Mizzou, the admissions committee can consider you for open assistantship or fellowship positions. Um, and as David mentioned, typically 
those um, assistantship positions uh, entail some type of um, research work or teaching component um, for anywhere from 10 to 20 hours per week. And if you are awarded one of those positions, it typically comes along with an insurance subsidy, um, a waiver of tuition for in-state and out-of-state, um, and then also a modest living stipend. So it really is a great opportunity. Um, when I was a graduate student, I did pursue an assistantship um, position, and it was um, really great to be able to alleviate some of that financial burden that comes with cost of education. So um, if that is something that you're interested in, be sure to indicate that on your application. Um, I'll, I'll mention one other source of uh, scholarship, and it's called it's through the International Programs Division. And it's called the Curators Grant and Aid Scholarship. It's been around since the mid 1950s and the curators created this fund to support international students, particularly to help them finish their degree program. So it's both the undergraduate level and the graduate level. The graduate uh, Curators Grant and Aid program is, is designed again to help students that are nearing the end of their degree, uh, help them, you know, ensure they have the financial financial support to, to finish up. It, it usually is a uh, tuition waiver, basically. It, it waives anywhere from one credit unit all the way up to nine credit units, which is a full-time course load during one semester. And so uh, international students from all over the world have been a part of this program and have graduated and gone on to do great, wonderful things uh, through this scholarship. It, it, the criteria for that scholarship is that you've attended for at least one full academic year. That's two full semesters of fall and spring semester. And then you can apply for that scholarship in your third and fourth semester. So we have many uh, master's level students apply for that and, and receive it. Uh, and uh, it's a great way to, you know, kind of help help you make ends meet if, if you're coming to the end of your program. Uh, we also, just so you know, uh, it's been a really very challenging year for some students for certain parts of the country. And the university uh, goes out of its way to try to help students in crisis situations. I don't think uh, students from Qatar will need to worry about that, but you, obviously you're familiar with the situation in Afghanistan. And uh, you can look on our website. We've, we've uh, done some interesting work with our students from Afghanistan to try to help support them during this time. So often we work on emergency student funding uh, and, you know, the only time it might come up in your situation is if you need a, an emergency travel home uh, due to a family uh, situation, a family emergency. Uh, we do help with those situations. We, we really want to support our students, especially when they're in times of uh, crisis. So uh, there's uh, student emergency funds available, and you can work with me uh, for, in that process if you need help. That's a good point. Thank you, David. Um, I, I just want to again open it up to participants in the Zoom platform. Even if you don't have a question, maybe a comment or a, some uh, interest, something you'd like to share about your situation, um, where you're working currently, and what you're interested in, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if not, we'll we'll wrap it up by sharing some contact information. I did share our email. Um, in the chat box, if you'd like to reach out to Education USA in Qatar to schedule an advising appointment um, in the future, we, we'd love sure. to hear from you. Um, I, sorry, I think, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so Shawqi Mustafa raised his hand. And before we wrap up, we I'm going to share our slides. Thank but you. Let's Askel. listen to Shawqi. Thank you. Shawqi, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself. Or share a Hi everyone. In the chat. Yeah. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Hello. Thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you, Education USA, and uh, for this opportunity for us as a journalist here in Qatar. Actually, my uh, my question, uh, Mr. David, already highlight and uh, the, the major part of my question regarding to the scholarship op options. But if you can um, give a little bit uh, tips regarding to the if there is um, restriction because of nationality or any tips that you can add it, I will be glad. And thank you again. Thank you, Shaji. Uh, great question. Um, 
Uh, yeah, actually, uh, you're, you're correct. There, there are uh, limitations uh, due to nationality, and that is because the uh, United States education system has a, a framework that is built around uh, primarily providing uh, federal funding to the university and to its students through various grant programs. Uh, it's called the uh, Federal Financial Aid Program. You may have heard of the FAFSA form. It's a form that's used for American students to be considered and uh, reviewed for potential financial aid through government sources. Well, obviously, uh, non, non US citizens are not eligible to apply through that FAFSA federal aid system. Uh, that's limited to citizens and permanent residents. However, even though there's not a, a, an equivalent system for international students, international students are eligible for financial aid uh, through, the, through the university funding, uh, which is basically a funding that comes through tuition dollars. Uh, some, some of the money could be from state sources, but many of the funds come through private donations. And we have many, many uh, well wealthy and and uh, well-to-do donors who are very keen on providing funds to international students and to the international student community. And, and I'm also, uh, you know, in many universities, the, the, the leadership, the curators or the board of trustees, many of the, the, uh, the president of the university, the chancellor and the provost often set aside discretionary funds to ensure that our international community has access to additional funding. And many, as I said, many private donors uh, will earmark their gift to be used for international education and international student scholarships. So while there is, a, you might say, a division of uh, funding available, and there are certain limitations and criteria based on nationality, there, are still, there, there is still availability of financial support. And, and by the way, uh, the graduate assistantships and the teaching assistantships, research assistantships, those are not, uh, you might say, discriminatory or uh, particular. Uh, anyone can qualify. Th those are merit-based awards. So if you have the qualifications and the skill and uh, the, the talent that the J School or the other departments are looking for, and by the way, the student affairs units, they hire graduate assistants and and other uh, units across campus that are more in administrative areas uh, will, how, will, will hire graduate assistants to work in their offices to help with communication, strategic communication, marketing, promotion, things of that nature. So, so those are the things, those are the types of positions that you can qualify for uh, competing with Americans uh, and other international students. But nonetheless, those are, those are <clears throat> based more on merit and qualification. Hope that answered your question. And just so you're aware, I did include a link to additional information about graduate assistantships and fellowships in the chat. So if you'd like to review that, you might find some additional helpful information there. Okay. Shall Thank we? You. So, yeah, sorry. Shall we? So we hope that you got the answer to what you need um yeah so uh, maybe it's time to sorry time to share our slides thank you so much uh Gillian, thank you so much david thanks a lot for this insightful presentation and uh, detailed and we hope our participants benefited from that and those of you who couldn't join uh you can watch it it's there on our facebook page education usa qatar and it is also there on the embassy Facebook page. Just sharing uh, the slides all, so that you have uh, communication information. So the emails for our team. Uh, so I hope, so do you see, sorry, do you see the presentation? No, it was there before, but now it's not. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. There you go. That's it. Okay, great. Great. Okay. Yes, thank so you. thank you. Thank you. So these are the members of our team. And uh, we have Melissa, we have Paula, Hanadi, and myself. You are welcome to uh, communicate with us and also Doha at educationsa.org. Um, Paula, share in the chat box. Also, if you would like to. 
uh, book a free advising appointment with our team. Feel free to scan this code and we will meet with you one-on-one -on -one or a group uh, advising session. Uh, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, thanks to our presenters. Thank you so much, Paula, Hanadi. Uh, wishing the best for everyone and enjoy the rest of your day or night. Yeah, wherever you are.